Hey, what's up, YouTube? Ashby to Ashby Farms, and today is uh, 22nd of January. This episode is dedicated to Scott McCarter. We just got off about an hour long phone call on my way home from work. He's located outside of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and he was having some questions. Uh, basically, he's got about 11 colonies uh, overwintered, pretty much all singles except for one uh, double deep. And the question is. Um, how do we make honey in the spring? What's the best plan going forward? Um, a lot of clubs do cover this. Some people don't cover this, but hopefully this will leave you more informed. So I just gave a similar presentation at Person County Beekeepers Meeting um, this past so Thursday night. But for all of you at home, uh, it's kind of like, how do you, what are you supposed to do in the spring? It's hard to plan for how much equipment when you may not have a plan going forward. And I'm going to give you all of my dates from this past season. Um, and I'm pretty much going to stick to the same schedule. Your days may be off slightly, just a little bit, uh, as far as the dates go, depending on your, your location and weather and all that. But um, basically, we're going to start with uh, how I would take a single into spring so that the bees don't swarm and you make a couple of splits and then you make a honey crop. I'm gonna give you the the hard dates that worked for us and walk you through. And at some points I'm gonna ask you, like use your imagination just a little bit on this. Of course, we're in my very messy workshop, but uh, it's that time of year where we're building a lot of stuff and a lot of equipment. And so uh, with that, we'll jump in. Um, pretend that this is your hive stand here. Um, so everything I build off of here, just imagine I, I needed it elevated for the camera. But, um, so let's say uh, this is our single. It's coming out of winter. Um, we're gonna go into our colonies on February 7th-ish, right around there. And we're gonna give them, I use, um, I use all internal feeders. We use the one gallon mother loads. And so whenever you crack them open, before you give them a lot of smoke or anything, we're looking to see what does the cluster of bees look like right on top? Um, coming out of winter, you're probably gonna see four to five frame clusters, you know, something about like, like this right here. So we're gonna give them a gallon of two to one feed and we're gonna put a pollen patty right on top of the cluster. And it needs to be, the pollen patty needs to be sized appropriately. So if it's a bigger cluster, you can give it a bigger pollen patty. And if, you, if it's a smaller cluster, give it a, a, a smaller patty. Um, we make, actually I've got some right here. This is leftover from last season. But um, if you want a great video uh, to watch, this, no need me making another video doing it. Greg, Greg Rogers was featured on Bob Benny's YouTube channel. And uh, Greg did a great presentation on how to make uh, your own mix. I like using, it's like a, like a four inch spackle knife. And we cut our own pollen patties out of this big 40, 50 pound block of it all at one time. So you just lay that pollen patty right on here, right on here, shut them up, and we're good for two weeks. We're gonna come back on the 19th, and this time, instead of feeding two to one, we're gonna feed one to one for the, for the remaining feedings after this, it's a thinner than one to one syrup. So we do like a, like a 1.3 parts water to one part sugar. It's more stimulating to the to the hive because they think it's an incoming nectar flow. So, February seventh, two to one. February nineteenth, one to one. It's a thinner syrup, and then all the subsequent feedings thereafter thinner than one to one. You can always feed one to one, but in our case, we're trying to stretch our sugar as far as we can go and stimulate the bees as best as possible. So, at the end of, golly. You come back on the 19th, if they have laid it, if that queen's been going to work, um, you need to be thinking about giving a second box to these colonies. Um, Scott's question was, you know, what do we do? How do we work with foundations versus drawn combs? Do I need drawn combs? Um, you know, we've got some wax moth damage here. Just want to show, show that, but... This is still usable to the bees. They'll fix all that, but it's not required. Um, because we sell a lot of bee uh, nukes in our outfit, 
Um, we we pretty much deal with these. I like the uh, double wax um, black foundation and and wooden frames. It's just my preference, but it's not set in stone. So um, you're gonna come back on the 19th February, and it's time to give them a second box. What you need to do is you need to go into that that beehive and find two frames of eggs or something with eggs on it and we're going to be then consolidating this colony and we're going to put in blank foundations and what i usually like to do is if we've got you never want a brood frame to be off by itself but let's use a for instance real quick if i've got if I've got two broods and two broods, I will stick a foundation in between. Or if you got like, you know, three broods, three and two, then that'll work. But what we never want to do is see two broods and one brood. That singled out brood will get cannibalized and never get used. So if I've got the case, we got two eggs, and then we've got, you know, let's say three broods and two broods. I'm going to drop a foundation right in the middle. Interrupt the brood nest is a good thing. It's going to slow down swarming. So use your foundations. Fill up the rest of the colony. Um, of course, we're talking about the 19th. So we're going to, going to feed them one to one. I'm going to lay in now your second pollen patty. And then we're going to put our second deep box on the colony. Those two frames of eggs go right in the center above the brood nest. And then we fill in with blank foundations on either side. Put this back over here for a second. All right, so, um, move some stuff around real fast. Ultimately we end up, everything kind of looks like that. So we're going to come back a week later. It's around the 26th of February. And uh, by this time, the hive is starting to get fairly large. Um, the, the eggs are going to cause the, the nurse bees to come up and take care of. And they're going to, if they've got that sugar syrup, in a week, you're probably going to be looking at like, Instead of two frames up here, probably close to five frames are drawn out right there around the 1st of March. Um, so we go into every colony right around the 26th, right around the 1st of March, something like that. And we're going to go through our whole apiary and we're going to balance brood. I want to see at least five frames of brood in every box. Um down low in the in the lower box um and the idea is that we treat them all the same so that when we come back um the next time around we should expect them all to all look the same you know like for us we run 40 colonies to a yard um for the most part i mean it, we've got some yards that are a little bit smaller than that but ideally 40. so we're looking at a week after the 26th is right around March the 5th. And our target date to take splits is March 12th. So in this case, we're gonna have call this Hive A, and this is Hive B over here. Hive B is the queen that we really like her genetics for whatever selection criteria that you as a beekeeper use. Those are the genetics you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in we're gonna we're gonna pull um, for example's sake we're gonna pull out two broods one food that's two broods one food and we're gonna set them over here and the only point of this nuke box well I should say this the queen needs to go over there our our beautiful genetics queen she goes here She's only going to be there for a week, either seven to nine days. We try to do like seven to eight days, something like that, but not 10 days. And what's subsequently going to happen is this colony here is going to make emergency cells. Um, basically, they know they're queenless and they are going to make some amazing cells. 
if you feed them. So we want to, you know, it's, it's March 5th. We're gonna drop in uh, a pollen patty for protein, uh, sugar syrup for carbohydrates, and they're gonna make some beautiful cells. And then um, when we come back a week later, we're gonna use a cell protector here, and we're gonna cut those cells out with a knife, drop it in here, and that cell will go into all of our splits. Remember that with our splits, um, the, the bees would much rather prefer to make their own uh, queen from their own stock than to accept yours. So the queen cells are, gonna, are protected with this to protect our great genetics from our favorite queen. But back to our main hive here. So we're gonna come in, let's say the, the 12th is our target date to take splits. Then we wanna come in on the 11th. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just move this over here. And in the lower box, we wanna make sure that the queen gets down here. So in our outfit, instead of looking for the queen, we're gonna shake every bee out of this box into this box. And the only thing getting left down here is a total of four frames. So set these aside for a second. We want one food frame, we want three brood frames, but within this criteria, we want one frame of hatching brood, a nice, big, beautiful sheet because that's gonna help repopulate the parent colony. We want two frames of eggs, so we get some subsequent generations coming in. Also, the beauty of that, that one frame of hatching is as soon as it's hatched out, the queen has somewhere to lay. So that's all we wanna leave in this colony. So the rest of these frames might be brood, might be food, whatever. We're gonna shake down, so one by one, we take them and we shake them off, shake them off, and we get, the whole goal is to make sure that the queen is down here. Now, if you happen to see the queen along the way, just put her down there, easy enough. But at the end of the day, we have, let me manipulate some frames real quick. There we go. At the end of the day, we've got one food, three broods, we're gonna place blank foundations back in this space, the queen is down low, and then comes the queen excluder, so she cannot get up. We put a blank box back on here, and oftentimes what happens is you're gonna need a third story, an additional box. Like for instance, um, consider that I run 19 frames plus a feeder, and we're only leaving four frames, that means we got 15 frames to take, but there's only 10 here. So we're gonna need a third story. I'll demonstrate in just a second. So for making fast splits, our splits consist of one food and two broods. So I'm gonna go ahead and set them up this way. So there's one food and two broods. And here is one food and two broods here. We've got one food, two broods here. We'll bring them all together like this. But I know that when we return 24 hours from now, it's come along and there's my split. Does that make sense? So we've got some quick grabs. As I mentioned before, we're gonna need an additional box up here. So we can add in the remaining, we'll call them assets. And we'll just put them right above in three. So we'll put that right above, put a lid on it. And what's gonna happen is all those nurse bees in the lower box are gonna come through the queen excluder and they're going to cover all of our brood, to keep it warm. And when we return 24 hours later, we're gonna have lots of queen castles or nuke boxes set up or whatnot. And this date that we're doing this is um, on the 11th of March, so we're going to return a day later on the 12th of March.
and we're going to take our splits out. So, for example, say we're going to take all our splits. I'm just going to put these back in here for a second. Just get them out of the way. So we've got uh, three more splits, three, three, and three. So those all went off in a queen castle there. And so now all we're left with here is a single. We're back to a single and it's, it's March the 12th. And all we've got is, you know, the day before we were in here, got three broods, which is one hatching, two eggs, and then a frame of food. And so our question, and then it's all you know, blank foundations. So how do we get this to recover? We just took away all their momentum. Got to feed them, put a pollen patty on there, come back in two weeks. So the next time we're in this is going to be uh, right around March the 25th. Okay. And meanwhile, let's talk about our splits. So we know hive, if this is hive B, I think that's what it that's hive A. Hive A is going to have some beautiful cells ready because we took the queen out on March the 5th and she's over here. So we're going to come back in here on March the 12th and we're going to cut out those cells. We're going to put them in a cell protector. We're going to add them into our splits, whether that splits in a nuke or a queen castle, whatever. And then on the 12th, once we're done stealing all those um, cells, we can do one of two things. We can take the queen and we can put her back in her parent hive. All that happened was a one week hiccup. We could leave one of those cells behind and see if they want to make an additional queen. Now you've split that parent hive. That's another way to do it. But just for today's example, um, we're going to take Miss Queen and her assets a week later and we're going to put them back in the parent hive. So, um, let me look around for parts and pieces here. So we've re let's let's say it's March the twenty fifth. We've returned to um, this hive, and they're now you know six seven frames of bees. So we want to again. Let's see. For example, sake, we're gonna put a second story on here. Lots of foundations make sure to pull up two frames of eggs with all these foundations if you just put a box of foundations up above the bees don't have a reason to go up there um so we've that's march 25th i'm gonna feed them again and now they're going to take over and inhabit the second box by setting these bees in this colony back so much and taking the multiple splits that we did We've set a time delay on swarm season. Inadvertently, some bees will swarm. There's swarming genetics out there. Um, we experience some of that in our own outfit. But usually, once you get to the nectar flow, uh, the nectar flow curbs the enthusiasm to swarm and wants to create lots of nectar. And no point in time have we used a queen excluder yet. So, we're gonna come back in here two weeks after March 25th is around March the 10th. And we're gonna feed them. It's up to you, it really depends on your nectar flow. Probably gonna feed them one more time right around there because a gallon of syrup in a bucket will take them all week to take down through little holes. A gallon of thin syrup in a gallon feeder like that, they'll suck it up in like a night or two. So they're gonna store it. What you don't wanna end up with is sugar water in your honey. So there's a trick to knowing like what's right, if that makes sense. So uh, it's it's March the 10th, and I'm sorry, it's April the 10th, and um, the bees are filling out nicely. They're gonna, remember, they need those carbohydrates to burn through to create so much brood. Um, I really used to underestimate how much it takes to draw wax and feed brood and just fly out every day. You know, you're, the, the hives necessities are barely being met by a gallon of feed every two weeks. We're not overfeeding them, but also at the same time, we don't want them to starve. We don't want to stop that forward momentum. 
So last year, our target date was April 20th for the nectar flow to start. And I thought, and I made a mistake, April 20th, time to make sure. So we, uh, uh, long and short as I, I put a bunch of brood in the bottom box and we put a queen excluder on there and the bees are not enthusiastic to go through the queen excluders. So this year we're managing it a bit differently. So around April the 20th, we're going to come along and we're going to give them a third box. Here's our third story. We're going to pull up two frames of eggs right in the middle. Got to give the reason for the bees to go up. And uh, this is right around April 20th. With the additional space, the queen is going to basically design her brood nest in the first and second box. But this box here is gonna be like the inner basketball volume, if you can imagine, is gonna be the brood nest and it's gonna have honey starting to come in around it. When the bees go up here to take care of those two frames of eggs, they're gonna get up here and start drawing out and storing honey. And uh, we're gonna then wait two more weeks from April the 25th, we're gonna come back about May the 9th. May the 9th, in goes some manipulation. This is time for our second split out of this hive for the year. The reason being is May 9th is, man, there's so many good reasons. A May queen, has the drones and the queen have so much more flight time. It's so much warmer, nicer weather. Um, the drone saturation rate in an area is going to create better bred bees. So for my own personal stock, I would prefer to have a queen mated in May over a queen mated in March or April. Um, everything's just kind of right. Lots of flight time for that queen, lots of drones, number of reasons. So we're gonna, we're gonna come back in this hive, there's not a queen excluder yet. It's May the 9th. I'm gonna set, we've got mostly honey at this point here. We've got half brood, half honey here. And we want to take every frame out of all these boxes and we're gonna shake them down. And our, and our goal again is to get the queen downstairs. We want the queen in the lower box. But our manipulation of the brood nest is interesting. For this last little bit, the, all of May, then the feeders are coming out. They're not in the box. They're gonna return back to the box whenever we pull honey, starting beginning of June. So they're only out for four to six weeks a year. We wanna make sure our queen is downstairs. We wanna have two pollen frames on the outside and eight frames of brood. Um, make sure our queen is downstairs. We would prefer to have um, a mixture of both eggs and hatching brood downstairs. If you've got hatching brood, as soon as it hatches, the queen's got somewhere to lay. We don't want her to feel like she's out of room. And then the eggs downstairs force the nurse bees downstairs as well. Otherwise, we're gonna have we're gonna pack in lots and lots of brood down here. We make sure our queen's downstairs. We shook every bee out. Put our queen excluder on. I'm sorry, I messed up. Queen excluder's not going in. So during this time, we've made sure that um, the queen is down here, and so is all the brood. But it's our split. It's our second split time. So I prefer to put our queen excluder on. We're gonna put our second box back on, which remember a lot of these frames are half food, half brood at this time. Like you'll see a brood nest and food all the way around, a ring of pollen, that kind of thing. So we wanna put, I, I usually just do it like this. Because I'm gonna be coming back tomorrow, like 24 hours later, I'll go ahead and just kinda of leave nine frames knowing that this is my split. So do that, put it back together on the 9th of May. All right, the nurse bees will come through the queen excluder. 
they re-inhabit the box overnight. We're going to come back on the 10th of May. Come off. Here is our second split. It can go into any number of random, uh, say this is a random nuke box sitting around. Bang, there's our split. We're gonna push in all of our brood that's left over here, right in the center. We're gonna put foundations on the outside. And the, the beauty of this is, over the next couple weeks, as all this brood in the second story hatches, they will, they will backfill those cells with honey. They don't have to draw out the comb. And then we'll add in this third box here. Partially, probably that much will already be drawn out, and they'll need to draw out. So if you've got like some, let's say you've got six frames of honey here. And it's already mostly full or capped. A lot of folks will put that already because because bees want to draw out the center before they draw out the outsides. So you could put like your completed honey frames here and here, partially honey frames next, and then like four blank foundations right in the middle. And the beauty of taking a split on March the 9th is if if an egg is laid, I'm sorry, I said March 9th, May 9th. The beauty of taking a split on May the 9th out of a big colony is it sets them back just a hair to make sure that they're not going to swarm. They really shouldn't be swarming anyways by that time. The nectar flow is full on, but last year we experienced some of that. The other benefit is an egg laid May 9th, flash forward a month to June 9th, um, is just becoming a nurse bee. By the time it becomes a forager, the nectar flows over. So we might as well take our split during the nectar flow and a second split out of our colony. And May is a great time to make queens. So that's why I prefer to do that then. Um, and then we've got some some combination of foundations plus what was brood comb is now available to be filled out. If the bees are able, a strong colony like a strong colony that is going along, man, they can draw like a frame a day on a nectar flow. But you have to think about what's going on in this hive May 10th to May 17th. All this brood is going to be hatching. When all that brood hatches, it becomes nurse bees. And what was all the nurse bees become foragers right around May 10th to 17th, which is the prime time for nectar flows. In a great nectar flow around here, a colony like this can put on like three pounds a day. So starting like May 10th through June the 5th, that's 26 days, at three pounds a day, that's 75 pounds of honey that this colony can make in addition to what it's already got. And we can get like 75 pounds in each box here. So there's no reason this colony can't draw out two deep boxes. Um, now, the likelihood of every colony being a success story is just not. If we had anywhere close to an 80 pound average across the whole outfit, um, I'd be tickle pink. We didn't do that last year. This is my plan for this year based on my experience from last year. Um, and then of course, when it's time to take honey, you can come in here and uh, there's any number of ways to get the bees out. You can use fume boards, you can use a blower, you know, any of that stuff. But that takes you through the calendar, through spring. That's my date by date on how I get two splits, plus make honey, plus avoid swarming. Um, yeah, so that's that. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'm Ashby with Ashby Farms. If you liked the content, as always, I just ask that you subscribe, like, and comment. It helps me get found in the YouTube uh, algorithm. And uh, best wishes and best luck with your uh, beekeeping this spring. Thanks. We'll see you on the next episode.